Literally. Where's the garlic salt? Where's the garlic salt? Have we started? Uh, Good morning. No, we haven't started yet. Oh. Wait. Uh. Here we have. Oh, ah, yeah. see me. Right. Hang on. Oh, she no, swore. I can bleep it. She swore. We're pre recording. Oh, yeah. Ah. <laughs> oh, God. All right, so um, here we are. Good morning. <laughs> You're going to say good morning, Max. Uh, morning. Right. Welcome to the Curly Cooks of Croydon. We're the Curly Cooks, and this is Croydon. <laughs> it is. Just. And no, out, it's in it. Yeah. And out there, out there is the most beautiful borough. <laughs> The borough that's just about to increase our council tax by 15% know, yeah. because they're bankrupt. Ah. Yeah. I tell you what, don't move to Croydon. <laughs> <laughs> they bankrupted themselves and then they increased Yeah, their... I loved it on the news. It said everyone, all the councils are going to put their thing up by 5% without asking the people, but we're going up 15%. Yeah, because they yeah, specially they asked Michael Gove. And when they right. went bankrupt, they gave themselves extra bonuses. That's why we love Croydon. Right. Always looking to escape. If anyone would like to offer us a home anywhere out of Croydon, we'd be really happy. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't are. know what to do with ourselves. <laughs> the people of Croydon are Do you mean a retirement home? We've been here since 1974. Yeah. My mum and dad live next door. Dina lives next door. Just in case you didn't and know. And the only service we get is the bins. Maybe. Maybe. And in case you're new to us, this is Mark. Hi there. <laughs> and Mark, I'm going to reveal to you now what you're going to be cooking later. So you've got time to be worried. Panic what? yourself. You are going Panic. to be cooking something I think a lot of people would like. And because you are so obsessed with pretending and showing off that you're Gordon Ramsay, Jane Oliver. Yeah, we are going to get you to make a crepe Suzette. What the fuck is that? <laughs> it's a pancake. And no, I was going to say a pancake. You're going to have to light them. Because it is Shrove Tuesday. Oh, that sounds great. You're going to have to set so them on fire. So I'm setting things on fire. You're going to set That's not bad fire. for a bloke. That's great. And I've got a really good, we went to Aldi the other day and I found a pack of 500 grams of minced chicken for £2.40. Nine. Nine. Yeah. £2.49. So I'm going to be making my chicken korma balls, which is a really... There's always balls in this show, have you noticed? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've never had a show without, without balls. balls in it. Yeah, she's obsessed. Mm, it's weird. It, I think it's because I'm often cooking, thinking of people with kids, and I know how much kids love balls. Meatballs. Balls. <laughs> also kids. Or big boys like big. balls. <laughs> Playing with balls. <laughs> she had sons, I had daughters. Playing <laughs> They're obsessed with them, aren't they? They flick them about. Right, uh, right. Okay. Right, and I am preparing three different vegetables that some of you have a great fear of. Mm. Um, so I'm she doing courgette, this. aubergine, celeriac. Quite a few people also ask for a Jerusalem artichoke and a globe artichoke. When globe artichokes come in season, which is in the summer, I will do something on the barbecue. So she basically put on her stories, follow her at Medina Sawala, asking what vegetable frights. She came in here, she was so funny. She went, well, loads of people are saying an artichoke. And I went, right. I said, what about? And she said, well, I asked them what vegetable frightens them most. So I was like, oh, okay, an artichoke. She goes, but there's never any artichokes anywhere. I don't know how people are scared of artichokes because you don't see them in the supermarket. And I thought, I'm it's now just a word you know, isn't it, folks? Yeah. It's just a word I you thought, know. I thought, I'm now in a parallel universe. She didn't want them to say artichokes. I'm going to so surprise really you funny. with something. Yeah. I love celeriac. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Well, do you remember that place in Nice where Milan. we had that? <gasps> well, I'm going to do something very similar to that. Oh, yes. I am indeed. Fantastic. So the first thing I'm going to do is my, oh, my little courgettes. Where okay, are they from? These where are they from? Just little organic courgettes, <laughs> these are. <laughs> oh, so we've got balls and... Yes. Um, and aubergines. I know, I know. I didn't know what the aubergine emoji meant the other day. I know. Who told you? Because my friend loves aubergines and I keep sending a little emoji. Oh, oh no! <laughs> as long as you don't sell the kids, it. The kids at school told me. <laughs> it's like this. You know it means this. What? High five. Aubergine. No, it does not. It does. It does. Aubergine? I swear. I, it doesn't mean aubergine. high five. You know when the prayer, like that, it actually means but high five. Talking, it no does. one mentioned the prayer. What the prayer? The aubergine emoji. The aubergine emoji. No, I know, but I'm saying. Oh. What? <laughs> Parallel that was universe. so distracting. So weird. Abstracted. Abstract. I'm explaining another emoji. Yeah, but you didn't tell us. I said, and the prayer well, emoji. Dina was a... talking about the aubergine. Okay. The kids at school told her what it meant, and you went, it's a prayer. No, right. and I said, and the prayer emoji isn't a prayer, it's anyway, a high five. Don't send splashing water after the emoji. I can't. Uh... 
Though it never works geographically, uh, does it? Because it's pointing down. Mark, no, we are talking about food. I so food. am I. <laughs> <laughs> I've got such an old phone, I haven't got any of those things. Okay. Right, so I'm going to make Hasselback courgettes. So you've all Ooh. had Hasselback potatoes. Yeah. Um, I've already prepared these ones because they're quite fiddly. So this morning when I was cutting through here Hang like on. this. Here's my tip. Now just said to do this. Let's try it. I balance so it. I, I do I balance this, it on a spoon. I do this with my potatoes. That doesn't make sense. She so, can still cut through it now. No, she won't. She'll hit the spoon. Of course she won't cut I through it. I don't think so. No, you will. Look at the side. There's no indentation Mark, where it's going. You will hit the like. So when you're doing hassle yeah, potatoes, yeah, put yeah. it into the spoon. Let's have a look. If I hit the spoon now, the courgette's going to fall apart. off. Yeah. Hit it's going to fall off. You. <laughs> <laughs> Standing here. No, hang on, stop. Everyone stop. It's gone wrong. No, stop. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> if I go through the spoon, because no. you're in I'm two gonna, pieces. Gonna, you can feel the spoon, you've gone through it. Hang on a minute. What's going on? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Pretend that's not there, right? What? So give me that. She's that's this your is garden. What I you do. Know. She's smoking them. This is what I do straight through to the bone. So it has to be on the spoony bit. And then it doesn't crack. Yeah. But well, of course, course yet won't do that. Well, don't really, break certainly it. not if you put it on the handle. <laughs> don't break it. You put it on the handle. Anyway, so we're just going through like things not working. You've just got to have a really good sharp knife. There's slightly I said to Nadia, I really like this knife because it's slightly flexible. I like your pink hair, Dina. Yeah, that was for the kids oh. for Valentine. She did. She did. Dina does and, art workshops. And for I kids. took um, I took the spray in and I sprayed all of their hair. They each had a pink streak. Oh. And um, boys as well. Yeah, even the oh. boys. The boys wanted it at the back of their head, funnily enough. Um, and one of the mums said, "Oh, I know why they like coming here now." It's like, yeah, because I'm a maverick. Yeah. I love. Blue I always remember my old head going, Dina, you're a maverick. Yeah. And Dina. I can do that Liverpudlian accent because he won't mind. Yeah. Um, okay. Dina, she's a great... Listen, guys, if Dina ever goes into an accent on this show, please don't be offended. She does it with a warm heart. We, Our dad is an actor. I'm an actor. A lot of people in our families are actors. And also my dad has had has an amazing Arabic accent. So we just grew up doing accents. Look. So oh, we sometimes great. slip into it, but we never mean offence. That's like, that's like... Oh, my, come on, we've got stuff to do. <laughs> that's like a pack of cards. playing our bloody courgettes now. That's like a pack of cards. Right, so now you've just got to douse it with some olive oil. I've no measurements. I'm just going to try and drizzle. Are you just free-forming? I'm just going into the, all those cracks. You're just improvising. And if you've got time, I would leave these sort of 10... Bloody hell, that's my nice olive oil, that. I would leave these 10 15 minutes. Some of those courgettes. Right, so I'm going to sprinkle it with the... That's me extra virgin. <laughs> the garlic salt that's always missing. Oh my god, all the garlic salt. It's not it's not garlic salt actually. This is garlic, just dry garlic. The only reason I'm using this, because if I put fresh it would burn. Okay. Burn, baby, baby, burn. Burn. And and you know uh, please forgive us if we say this a lot because it's just very important and we have to keep saying it in case somebody has never been to this show before. Be really careful what garlic you buy. Because every, uh, oh my God, some of the supermarket ones are so disgusting. And, and they taste like, you know, the old smell left in a garlic press. Yeah. So get a good one. A little salt. Is it better to get granules, isn't it? Are those called granules, do you uh, know? They're not, they're just called machinata, which means mashed up. No. Mm. Uh, pepper. <laughs> That's another joke in this house, pepper. Right, now, what you would do is put these in the oven for 15 to 20 minutes. Now, when you, depending on the quality of your vegetable, if you've got a, a soft old courgette, it's gonna cook in half the time as a fresh one. So you've really got to look in the oven, see if it's sort of spread apart, gone a little bit crispy around the edge. So I'm saying ten, mine this morning were 10 to 15 minutes. And then you add your cherry tomatoes. So that's in for 10 to 15 minutes. Then you add your cherry tomatoes. Now, normally, I would have a lot more of these. But, but I do have a 24-year-old son that is constantly in my fridge eating the supplies. Yeah, it's so annoying. I come in and I bought stuff to make and this lot of all munched it. We need a cupboard with a lot. I know. I'm where serious. We can, where we can put... So I heard Mark out in the hall mentioning he'd had a date. And I was like, <laughs> a date? Have you found the dates? 
Right. The old no, crusty one. Keep ones. using my nice olive oil. Yeah. Hell. Goes back in. And then we want some oregano. <laughs> it was from Aldi. It was Aldi, that one. Oregano, just a sprinkling. Oh, it looks beautiful already, doesn't and it? And that goes into the oven. Would you like to get out the one I prepared earlier? Ooh. What I was going to do was I was going to do a nice photograph. Oh, sorry, we are only doing Liverpool because have, that was Birmingham. That was We're Birmingham. Not, oh, Birmingham. I, actually, I'm from Birmingham, so that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> but as I've said before, I before now have been told off for doing my dad's accent. <laughs> okay. okay, so we so you see, get that one out. We'll let's like see this coming out. Yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. I want to mop that olive oil mm. and juice up with bread. Or I, want to pour, that yourself. or I want to pour it on with rice, onto rice. Right. Look at that. So bring that over. That one's in. That one's in. We need that little base. With all that gorgeous yummy. Mm. Oh, look at that. Make it nice and shiny. Mmm. Mm. What's, Mark likes Mark, courgettes. Oh, do you like courgettes? Mm. You really, really, really love these. In fact, I'm going to say it's one of my, on my store, on my feed, this is probably one of the best things that people oh. love. Really? Yeah. And then I fried some breadcrumbs with garlic and added some vegan parmesan. This was by Nourish um, because Lidl don't seem to be supplying it in London. Oh, you've you've tracked it I've down. tracked it down. I've had thank you all you lovely people that keep saying you've seen it around the countryside, but it ain't in London. Right, Whoa. and guys, um, if you've just joined Curly Pits of Croydon today, this is your first time with us. Be prepared. Dina has serious, serious addictions to all the budget supermarkets like Lidl and Aldi, and she has now converted me as well. She, uh, she laughed her head off the other day. Which was your sister? Went, Where's your sister? You've got to come. I said, I, I said, I need you to take me to somewhere. And she said, where? I said, Aldi. She was laughing. Little. She was laughing. Yeah, I was like, what, you want to come? Uh -uh. I'm obsessed. Right. Did you find it? No. Oh. What? Sesta. The Sesta that I like. Oh, nice. Now, what did I say? That's it. I said to you, get all your stuff. God. Uh, her <laughs> boob, my boobs and her bum. Yeah. Her bum knocks me out. And a little bit of, oh, look at that. Oh, I see, that doesn't go back in the oven. That looks so beautiful, yeah. Do you want a lovely plate? Should I find a nice... It's no, nice I think it's... Rustica. Yeah, lovely. We like it like that artigiano, don't we? Artigiano. artigiano. And then no, you can either oh, top it... God, it smells good, guys. ...with oh. ripped basil. Oh, ripped basil. I like ripped. That. I don't know, I still basil. think that would look nice on a nice Italian Oh, plate. nice. Let it go. My only problem <laughs> is it might all fall apart. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in the tran transport. So torn basil or torn parsley. Look, there you go. Oh. Hasselback courgettes. Mm, mm, mm. I could eat those for a brekkie. Very Lovely. Nice. Right. What's next? Right. I am going to... Nadia and her colander top. Chicken korma balls. Chicken korma balls. Right, so I've got a pack of 500 grams of chicken. So everybody is trying to save money at the moment. So I've made just some fresh breadcrumbs two slices of bread, one to two slices of bread, depending on how much you're trying to bulk it out. Um, now, I'm going to use some fresh parsley. Uh, if you're not like coriander, then use coriander because of course it's, it's much more Indian flavour. Some people now, say it tastes like soap. Yeah, yeah loads of people hate coriander. So even if, you know, it's funny, like if I'm having people over to lunch or dinner you know and I'll say oh, anything you don't like and they say I eat everything I always go back with another text what about coriander because even people that eat everything hate coriander if you'd said that to me when I was a younger man I'd have thought what, what's what's she talking about <laughs> any is this some kind of so line? when I was any... a younger woman I wouldn't have been interested in your likes or dislikes of coriander yeah, it would have been coriander <laughs> so, it'd be uh, another kind of ender. Mum's brother that, uh, has always lived in Lincoln since they were brought up in Epsom, but he moved to Lincoln when he was about 18. Could never get fresh coriander like back in the 80s. It was a yeah, really, you can get it. But when you think about what's available now, absolutely everything. anything yeah. and everything. Like right. ginger was hard to find, so what fresh ginger? Now, all these little bits I'm putting in, you do not have to put in. So, fresh ginger. Don't worry about it. If you haven't got it, and if you don't want it, and you're watching the pennies, don't put it in. These are little extras. So what I'm always trying to do is, think of people that are more cookie, 
and more chef, not chefy, but like to cook and like lots of ingredients, but also always thinking of those people that A, might not want to spend on it, B, just might not have the time for it, and C, just want to get dinner on the table as quick as they can so they can get the gin and tonic and flop down in front of these tenders. One of so, the big problems for people is, is it not time rather than just money? I mean, there's money, but there's yeah, also exactly. time, isn't it? So I'm going to tell, so I'm adding these extra bits. So, so at the moment, we've got the bread breadcrumbs, okay? Yeah. So the breadcrumbs, and then some of the fl so chili. I'm going to put in a little bit of fresh chili because it looks so nice in the balls. But why not? <laughs> chili balls. You don't have to put chili again. I'm mindful if you're feeding the kids and they hate anything chili. Or you can just put some dried chili. Most people have some in their cupboard. Uh, thinking again of pennies and but it looks so nice, doesn't it? The red. Yeah. So and also remember, if you take the seeds out, it's much less hot. I forgot something in my dish. I didn't forget it. I could hear you oh. thinking. You could hear me thinking. The yeah. whirring. I could, hear, I could hear you went like that. It's no. weird because there's noise when Dina's thinking. It's total, total silence. <laughs> <when you are. laughs> um, so if you haven't got the vegan parmesan, but also even if you have, you can, you can add, I, I'm always going on about this, but if you're new to the show, um, Enja Vita Nutritional Yeast Flakes. Say that again. <laughs> I said like that quite well, didn't I? Enja Vita Nutritional Yeast Flakes. <laughs> um, full of vitamin B12, often vegans. Most, actually, some of us, some of, everybody can be lacking B12. You can add that into the cheese because it's got a, like a slightly cheesy whiff to it. Yeah, and nutty. And it's good for you. Mm. So you can and add that you in. Put, where did you put the garlic salt? I'll put it away. Oh, <laughs> right, so season your your oh, balls. Fucking hell, that thing. Little, <laughs> oh. God Almighty. Oh, but it's coming out now. Yeah, yeah. It's wet though, isn't it? Little yeah. little tip. Um, when you, I think in things like balls, <laughs> what? Yeah. garlic powder, and I resisted it for all of my adult life. I thought, oh no, I've never used that. <coughs> Works much better in burgers if you want garlicky burgers for your balls. But garlic powder is agony on balls. Yeah. <laughs> right, stop now. <laughs> pepper, or you could use some black, so pretty, some white it, pepper it? actually. Yeah, it's looking pretty. It's turn it into balls. So in a minute, I'm gonna just break down how, again, how you can, you can do without all of it. You really can. Oops. You can just have the breadcrumbs and some. I'm going to be using this paste. It's not a sauce. Oh, is it Patax? Yeah, oh, it's Patax. not a sauce. It's paste. Patax is fantastic. And I'm just putting a little dessert. It really is. Patax is honestly it's the best curry paste. Is it? It's yeah. really good. And we're not paid, and we're not. We're not. We haven't. We've always honestly, used it. You the can whole literally, family. Literally, literally fry vegetables, add some garlic, add some paste and a tin of coconut milk and you've got the most amazing yeah, veggie I curry. Always, I always say add a pinch of sugar though, always. Why? Or you, I, I don't know, for me, just to balance it back out, I always put a pinch of sugar. Wow. I do with my Thai paste as well, do you oh. know? Thai paste has got, um, it's got palm sugar in it anyway. Yeah. Can I say it sounds a bit pretentious, Matt? Sorry. No, no, just a little bit. Sorry. I put sugar in mine. Yeah. <laughs> I put a pinch of sugar. Yeah. So there we have our balls. Right, Dina, can you wet your hands? Because Dina's going to make the balls while we make now, the sauce. Now, there'll be many people saying, oh, but you're a vegan. Why are you touching oh, her meat? Oh, yes. boys still eat meat. She I cooks. have many friends that are meat eaters. Um, so I do cook meat. I do mostly cook vegan when people come round. But I've got one particular friend, Diane, who takes... Thanks if there's not a chicken. But well, also, we're a, we're, yeah. we're a big family and loads yeah. of people yeah. eat meat. You're not offended to no, cook meat so at just because you're vegan doesn't mean you don't handle balls. Yeah. <laughs> Mark, now stop. Well, I don't handle balls because I don't want to handle balls. All right. <laughs> All right. Don't even cut. I've got two of them now. Right. How, would I, how big would you like your so, balls? So, so um, Dina, the reason Dina wet her hands is if you wet your hands... Look how none of the meat will stick to your that perfect. nice size ball? Mm -hmm. Yeah. None of the meat will stick to your... Yeah. Can you put that over there? Because I'm just going to show you how to do the rice. Put that there. Mm -hmm. No, that. Oh. Right, rice. Oh, really? Sweet. It's so easy to put rice. There was always chaos at the Kaylee Cooks. Really easy. Do you know what? I can't believe how I've changed over the years with rice, Dina. What do you mean? If people used to say to me, I don't put salt in my rice, I'd be offended. Would you? I'd go, uh, but now, I'd, I'd I'd offended. Well, you know. Culinary wise. 
So bun some rice in. Bun some. People get over worried about cooking rice. But I've had some really awful rice in people's houses. Yeah, Sorry, you. Wend, you're getting a mention, but I know you don't watch. <laughs> she doesn't watch? No. Wend, our she oldest hates. friend. Yeah. Okay, so boiling water really must just be boiling, not cold. And would you say that's an inch, Dina? That's what I usually do. Yeah. About that much above the water. This is for white rice. Well, if it more was, than an inch. If it was brown rice, it would be... Well, um, you shall I tell you what I do now? I've changed my rice cooking. Do you do cooking. it like pasta? No, I've, cooked my, I've changed my rice cooking. So white rice, I use cold water, and brown rice, I use boiling. And now she's come to blooming confuse everything. <laughs> I never understand rice. I used to just boil it. Most people put too say? much in the pan and then not enough water, and then it's... Recently, I've seen on Instagram a lot of people cooking rice like pasta. Melise cooks does it. Big bowl of water. Like a risotto almost. And then, then no, and then pour it out like pasta, but I can't do it. It's it's in my DNA to cook rice like this. Yeah, that's a bit weird. How's the balls going? It's all right, a bit sticky. Bit sticky. Right, okay, now when I'm doing it, anything curryish, and obviously this is not proper curry, I wouldn't be so offensive to say that we're cooking curry. This is a British take on something. It's a bit like a curry. So a little bit of oil. Because but that patax paste has got all the elements in. You'd have a cumin, your turmeric, your yeah, it is, Adina is so phobic of anything in a jar or a packet. <laughs> so, um, in goes, oh, I probably put a bit too much on there. Now, I was going to put an onion in here. I had one onion left, and Dina came round yesterday when I wasn't here and nicked my onion. <laughs> Dina. My one onion. Well, this Dina. is the problem when you live next door. Yeah. Yeah, just a bit like, have you got peas every Sunday? It's only because I love peas. Oh, hang on, I've put too much oil. I don't want all that But you oil. haven't worked out when you do your shopping list that you need four kilos of peas a week, yes. not one kilo. Sometimes I think I lose them in the freezer as well. Right, so... You don't like them, do you? Oh, I don't mind them. No. I just find them fucking annoying to get on a fork. <laughs> oh, no, I've got turmeric. Nuts! Turmeric, Dina. Turmeric. Where? Will it ever come out? Do you well, know, you have to move fast. Is this rice all right? Nads, no, this is going to burn. You, oh. often, you often burn your rice. <laughs> okay, I did not you ever do. burn my the rice. The amount of times I've cleaned a pot full of rice. So you stir rice. it just once. Only once. It's sticky down there, babe. It's not. Shut up. And then you turn it right down. <laughs> you could have put some turmeric in there if you wanted some yellow rice. Yeah. Oh, nice. Is that what they do for yeah. peel out? I put a bit of turmeric and a cinnamon stick. No, don't oh. Oh. And a cardamom oh. pod. Oh. Oh, That's a nice party one. So you take nice cardamom. Oh. Especially when you get it stuck in your teeth. <laughs> I well. like cardamom. Sorry, why I said to Mark, don't film that was because I was pouring the oil out because I put too much. You don't need loads of oil. So I'm just frying those spices. Now, again, you don't have to add garlic and you don't have to add ginger, but if you want to, for a bit more puff, puff, bam, <laughs> then you can. Have you put spices in Oh, it smells delicious, that, just that paste. Yeah. Oh, the paste has spices. Okay, and you can put a garlic in there as well if you want. Right, it's so easy, this. Now I'm gonna put some, ooh. What are you making? So I would have actually also, guys, cooked some an onion. What are you making? She hadn't Just remind us what you're making. Pour my balls. <laughs> so a tin of. Um... Oh, it smells great, doesn't it? Now this this coconut milk is from Marks and Spencers. Right. But Dina said in Aldi. Aldi. Between sixty nine and seventy nine pence, which is really really good for coconut. So this, this tin alone has probably blown your budget, hasn't it? No, I think it's a pound, actually, oh, for Marks and Spencer's. It's amazing how much more they are, though, isn't it? Yeah. Tops up. Um, I stopped. I mean, I used to buy organic um, coconut milk and stuff, but now I just... I look at the price of everything. It makes me sick. Yeah, literally. It really does. Out the everything is it, so yeah. expensive. Am I allowed to show those? What? Yeah, no, yeah what, my aubergines? Oh. Am well, I allowed to show them? That's what's what's matter? Is it being coherent? Yeah, oh, I see. This here. We're not going over there. Right, and how are my balls doing? They're perfect. Done. Oh, wow, look at that. Beautifully done. Gorgeous. You'd almost think you're an artist. <laughs> so 
So you can make those and then freeze them. And what you do is put them on a baking sheet with some baking paper and then just freeze them for about an hour. Because if you put them in a bag and put them all together, they're gonna to stick together. So you freeze them and yeah. then you can put them in a bag and tuck them away. Don't forget to date them. That's the most annoying thing, isn't it? So we're gonna turn down that. Am I allowed to make myself a coffee whilst filming? Uh, no, because it's too noisy. Is that your cup? Oh, thanks, <clears throat> Right, so I'm just going to give that a little stir. So I'm going to bring that up to the bubble. And then just one more second. And then we're going to add in our balls. Now, if you want, you fry. You can fry the balls first or you can pop them in the oven to seal them. You have to be careful with them if you're putting them straight into the gravy, don't you? Because they can break up. So that would be quite a low calorie dish if you use the light coconut milk because some people... We don't count calories, yeah. but some people have been asking us um, for low calorie dishes. So good chicken would be really good with a low That is a brilliantly, brilliant, low fat, uh, low carb. If you're into all that stuff, we're not. Um, if you're into if you fry keto, them, it's more calorific, right? If you do what? If you fry them first. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So in, if you're just going to pop them in a sauce with a light coconut milk, you're laughing. I mean, it, sound, it sounds ridiculous, but men wouldn't think about that sort of thing. No. You know what I mean? Salt. Just say fried balls, you go, yeah, thanks. <laughs> and the other, yeah, you're so lucky. And yeah. the other thing is, um, thanks, it's you. also, if you're on, on that crazy keto or Atkins or anything like that, this is also good. Mm -hmm. And frying wouldn't even matter. So I'm just going to add a pinch of sugar, obviously not if you're on a keto or an Atkins diet. And then we're going to turn it down, right down. And these, these will just almost poach. So if you were doing veg, you would fry them first. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if you, um, you know what you could do? You could mix up your chicken and then roll straight onto a plate like this. We want to save washing up because I'm really aware of that as well. So I'm just going to let them poach. I'm not going to touch them, move them around, play about with them. You're not going to jiggle your balls. I'm not going to jiggle the balls. <laughs> because then they'll start to break up. Fabulosity. Okay, and that's, that's just gonna, and then at the end, I'm gonna put a, few, a bit of ground almond and cream, but we'll do that in a bit. Mm -hmm. For now, that's it. Is that me? Back to Dina. Back to Dina, the next dreaded vegetable, the worst emoji, oh, <coughs> yes. the aubergine. Now, I like fried aubergine. I don't like boiled. This is a little bit of boiled and baked, Ooh. but it works. Uh, Japanese recipe, um, really so, so simple, delicious and nutritious. It's um, funny because uh, Dina is the aubergine queen. She cooks, nobody cooks aubergines as well as my sister. And she, she was round the other night and she said, oh, I'm going to my friend, I won't name her, uh, <laughs> tomorrow. And uh, I've got to do a dish to go with her aubergine parmigiana. I was like, aubergine parmigiana? She was like, yeah, I said, She's making you aubergine <laughs> parmigiana. And she person. was like, yeah. I was like, can I name her? Michelle. Michelle, you are a braver woman than I, and I won MasterChef. But she has been. I wouldn't have cooked over. She's been taught by me. Michelle's ah, been taught by okay. me. Ah, okay. So there we go. Split it in half. Hmm, not very equal, but uh, I've got a bit of a wonky eye. Okay. <laughs> right, <laughs> the next thing, you take a nice sharp knife and go all the way around the edge. Let me just pause for a minute. Just see these holes, the way they're coming in the rice, that's, that's gonna be perfectly steamed rice. You don't, I forgot to say to you, don't lift the lid off. Do you remember dad? Don't yeah. touch the lid. Yeah. My dad would wrap like. But how do you know when it's done, the holes? Yeah. <laughs> no, but I mean, that's the kind of thing I'd want to know. How do I definitively it's know when well, my rice is done? Well, because I'm seeing, but it's what, 10 minutes? Yeah. Everybody okay. always wants to know the nutritional value of vegetables. Um, just the colour. Yeah. Why would you not want to eat a purple vegetable? So I've scored all the way around the edge. Actually, I've gone quite deep. I've gone, I've gone right in. Okay. One. And then we're going to cut through Jump. and cut through to the bottom. Very easy. It's really easy. It's not a difficult job to do. Um, and then what you would do next is soak them in salted water for half an hour. But we haven't got time for that. That makes the aubergine nice and fluffy. So when it's baked, it sort of pops out of these little shapes. Um, 
It's quite staggering, isn't it? The colour yeah. of many aubergines. You get all those yeah. different colours. I really like the ones that are purple and white. They've got Speckling. a special name. Yes. yes Stripy yes. ones. Oh, I'm so annoyed so with myself, right. I can't remember. Because they taste completely different. I was going to say, is there, are there any studies into which coloured food is the best for you? Or is it purples. any colour? Purples. The well, purples <coughs> are the best for you, really. really. But really, it's about variety. It really is. It's the spice of life, isn't because it? Because with your gut microbiome, which have trillions and trillions of microbiome in your gut, they all need different things. So every single colour that you can have, that rainbow and then rainbow and crack, basically, just like insane different colours, you are going to be, you're going to really support your yeah. gut. I want to see a rainbow and crack, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> can I just do a quick pause? Yeah. So um, see how I'm just really <clears throat> gently turning these over. You don't put your spoon in and give it all a certain, because also you want to make sure you've turned each one. Because you know what happens, don't you? Know you know what you bought, you'll break your balls. Yeah. All sorts of disasters. See that you don't have to fry them it's again, reducing calories if that's what you're worried about. Don't think calories. I love the way you're holding your arm out like a ballet dancer. <laughs> <laughs> it's all to do with balance. Balance, yeah. As I've learned recently, if you don't swing your arms oh, yes. when you walk, it's well, one of the signs of the dimension. Well, that's really weird. I've never seen you swing well, your arms. I arm. do. <laughs> she wants like this. <laughs> that's classic. That's... Head hey, forward. Do it again. Like that. <laughs> Whichever doctor I was listening to on YouTube, because people should know that my all-time obsession is so watching nice. health videos, and um, apparently you can reverse it by swinging. Oh. So I was going along to Crystal Palace up this going the other day, and then oh. one arm stopped, and I was like that. Oh no! And I was like, yeah, Were you going? Get... Did you veer off? <laughs> Dina, you're going to get classed as the local strange person. Yeah. Right. So let's make the paste for these aubergines. I'm going to make enough for two. I know there's only one there. But I'm going to be eating the one that's made, and I'm going to be eating this one, so that's a lot of aubergines. So, two tablespoons of miso paste. If people don't know what miso is, it is fermented soya beans. So, fermented foods are really good for your gut as well. And if you don't know anything about your gut, your gut is your second brain. And literally, that's how scientists describe it. So it's like the, the root of all your health, mental health, physical health, everything. So if you're really looking after your gut, everything about your health is going to be better, isn't it, Dean? One tablespoon of peanut butter. Look at that. We love a bit of peanut butter in this house. If you're allergic to peanuts, tahini works really well um, and it's delicious. One tablespoon of tamari or soy sauce. Okay. Tamari's lower salt, isn't it? It is. It's gluten free as well, I think. Yeah, I mean, try and get the lower salt. I get this lower I, salt I one. Don't. And we've got so used to it now because it's um, this family eats a lot of soy sauce. Can we get? Can you get alcohol-free soy sauce? Oh, I'm slightly worried that what I'm drawn to in it obviously isn't alcohol <laughs> in the alcoholic sense, but the strain of alcohol in it. One tablespoon of Japanese oh, rice vinegar. Out. Whoops, that came out a bit. I love fast. the way you've taken up my blooming station again. Would oh. you like to find a nice plate for my aubergine over there? One teaspoon of sesame oil. Toasted is better because it's more delicious. And then one and a half of maple syrup. Ooh. What a fascinating combination. Isn't it? Yeah. Sweet, what nutty. Do you want it, Dina? Well, the aubergine is looking pretty dark at the moment. So. Like this? Yeah, that'll do. Okay. Really nice Try plate. not to bang them about now. With a green edge. Yeah, green edge. Okay, it's as simple as that. You are literally. Oh, you so need that we... wanky little stirrer. I do. Where's the, the wanky stirrer? <laughs> <laughs> wanky. Dina, do you want some chopped parsley to go on? No, top? I'm having my lovely curly spring onions mm. and sesame seeds. Mm. Uh, what I would like you to do, could you just brush that one with a bit of sesame oil, please? It's here now. Oh, right, so sesame. if these have been soaked, they open a little more easily. Um, but what you're going to do is you're going to... So go in the gaps. Go in the gaps, yeah. yeah. But that will have all opened up with the soaking. What I like about this is you're making a relatively... You pass an aubergine in a supermarket, you think, it's an aubergine. Yeah. And you probably think, that's an emoji. <laughs> and you'd have a bit of a laugh. But, you know, you don't look at veg and think, I can make a meal or an event yes, out of it. Yes, absolutely. And that's what I find kind of well, surprising that's, about that's this. That's what our book is going to be. Yeah. Like, we're going to really do that, but also, you know, give the options for meat as but well. But it's like making really, making really everyday ingredients an event. Yeah. 
make it the star. We just want to, you know, just challenge people's ideas on the fact that to eat vegetables is expensive, to eat healthy is expensive, it's not. To eat processed food is really expensive. Processed food is the most expensive. Right, there, yeah, lovely. So that goes in the oven for half an hour. Da -da -da. <coughs> boom, boom. Ooh, those other mm. are nearly ready now. So here we have the glazed baked. Obesity. Is this one you prepared earlier? This is one I prepared earlier. Oh, I'm getting good at this lot. Guys. Look at that. Oh, I'm going yeah. to then I'm going to top it with a little bit of a bit more light. Look at that. Where's the mum? You had it out. Sesame seed. Probably would have had white ones, but I couldn't find them in her kitchen. I've got white. No, you need white with that. Here, yeah, okay. Oh, and really? here are my decorative spring onions. They look like Aldi's carrot. Calling the <laughs> carrot. <laughs> Now see, she can't find them. We had them last night. I wonder if they're still on the table. And of course, these would be lovely with just some rice. Yeah. Whoa, look at that. I need a photo of that. Yeah, now it's got the camera out. And I think I'll just have a few little chopped spoons. I'm going to take a few on the move here, because you can, can't you? Mm -hmm. So even adding just then black and white sesame seeds, we've got two more of our 30 plants a week that you're supposed to try and have to right. for like a healthy duck. Let's try and uh, fish it out now. Yeah. That looks lovely. Why do you want to fish it out? This is for Hannah. Lovely Hannah. You were supposed to come and have... Whoa, look at that. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Thing with aubergine, it's so meaty. Mm. Oh, my gosh. Delicious. Good. That's like eating fish or something. That came out oh, like meat. Oh, God. That was so good. Oh, and that tangy miso. Mm. Lovely. Okay, fat. Is it me again? No, uh, I'll, I'll, shall I finish off my balls? Yeah, finish off your balls. Um, <clears throat> right, now these two extra bits here, you do not have to do. This is extra pennies, extra fat. Don't have to do this. Which is? Cream. I'm using some of your plant creams. Oh, we've God, got so much. Out, if you're a vegan, she really recommends this. Uh, you don't need to add this cream. Oh, it's just an extra it. thing. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, <coughs> oh, wrong ones. We ground. Wrong nuts. Wrong nuts. <laughs> oh, you're preparing yourself. I'm preparing you. When we, the ugliest vegetable yeah, ever. Well, when we were filming with Michel Roux, he described a celeriac as looking like Gordon Ramsay's face. <gasps> So true. Our rice is ready. <laughs> so Our true. rice. Look at that. Beautiful. Oh. Look at that. Fluffy. Yeah. Right. Two tablespoons roughly of ground almonds as i say you don't have to add that so that just thickens it up a bit yeah thickens it I up but also but also it gives that i don't know i quite like that slightly grainy sauce look at that how gorgeous is that and and the sauce you can freeze as well um so it's let's sew it <laughs> it's a good thing i haven't got bones <laughs> <laughs> We've got our rice. Oh, what should I take? Here? And just a little tip, when you're, if you've cooked your rice and it's, um, you know, you're a while yet before you're serving it, if you just put a clean tea towel or a piece of kitchen towel over it so that the steam can keep, can be drawn into it and not make the rice soggy. So this is classic steamed rice. Okay, hang on. Just. <laughs> These drawers. They haven't been positioned very well, no, really, have they? But then in another way, they're perfect for when you're cooking. Oh. So, oh, yeah, I haven't got all of that. Oh, God, Dina, get me some kitchen. I really hate it when I get a drip on the side. Oh, story of your life. They don't do that on, on, on normal cooking shows. They never, never drip. Never drip it. No. They never so get annoying. Drips. So, look, it's, it's a con. They would get drips. Oh. They don't, because it's live on Saturday morning. Yeah, but they're chefs, aren't they? So it's really easy. <laughs> <laughs> Little tip as well, if you've ever put a drip on a plate and you've wiped it and then it looks really smeary, just put a little spot of vinegar or lemon juice, that's what they do in restaurants, at, um, onto, the, onto your kitchen paper and it clears all the grease off. So um, onto the top of that, you could put some toasted almonds as well. Or, oh, oh, you're next. Am I? Your next. Oh god, I just suddenly got the wibble wobble. <laughs> uh, got to set fire to, do I just get a fire hydrant? 
Okay. Fire. Oh my gosh, yeah, we were gonna get the fire extinguisher. I'll go and get it. There you go. That's oh, lovely. Put it Ooh, over here. Put it and in the I light. say, if you wanted a bit more faff, you could fry some almonds onto the top oh, yes. and put them on top. Right. So we need to clean this area now. The now. fun bit. Okay. Right. right. Whilst you okay. clean, shall I go and find the fire find extinguisher? Find the fire extinguisher. Okay. So, Ooh, well, as this is one take, as live, I'm going to find the fire extinguisher. Ah, and there it is. Fire extinguisher. Fabulous. Oh, I've just realised something. What? Oh, God. Um, need the Grand Marnier. I've got Grand Marnier. Can you use Grand Marnier? Yeah. Grand Marnier. And there they are, guys. Obviously, we're shooting at Valentine's. Right, so, just trying to... Bear in mind, you're in a live situation. <laughs> Selena, can you find some alcohol we can set on um, fire? Oh, I'm just going to show you. See you, Maria. No. Look at that. Well, it's supposed to be oh. something orangey, but. Look, these were from Paddy to Maddy. These were from the girls to Mum. These were from the girls to Mum. So it was so sweet when I was teaching this week. Um, all the kids were having Valentine's suppers with their parents. Oh. Aww. So we, they? Yeah, we made Valentine's cards, which they all wrote to, one oh. to their family and then one to their not favourite parent. Right. Yeah. Mostly went to the mums, I have to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, so. I bought the girls a Valentine's present. Did each. you? Yeah. Same one. Oh, look, I thought for a minute that was Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> that was such a brilliant, <laughs> this great show. Let's see, that's his nose, actually. Yeah, yeah there we go. That's perfect. That is funny. <laughs> okay, yeah. so. Crepe Suzette. Oh, right. Classic, this, this is me. Classic French. Um, Bullshit. Yeah. Pancake. You know, you know, in the, it was the eighties, wasn't it, Dean? There was a lot of this about. Yeah. The um, the uh, you'd go to restaurants and you'd see. Still, uh, if you go to places like the Savoy and the yeah. Ritz and all of those, they still do the classic. So it's basically a pancake on fire. It is a pancake on fire. Flambe means fire. Okay. Set on fire. All right. Are you? But, I'm just melting for the butter. So I've already made the pancake mixture. So that was uh, well, that like 100 grams. Huh? Isn't that like the crucial no, bit? No, not really, it's boring. 100 grams of flour, 225 mils, no, 325 mils of milk and an egg. And I've just whisked that together. No, because what we want to do is to see you make the pancakes, we want to see you set the fire on the pancakes. Yes. I've also- Have we got I've a lighter? made the sauce. It would be too much, darling, for you. Oh, look, there's lots of rice there. <laughs> now I didn't have an orange. You need an orange. God, I wondered what you were talking so, about then. Why would you need an orange? To well, go we, in this sauce. So I used orange juice. I used 100 mils of orange juice. I used uh, 65 grams of butter and I think 60 sugar. grams of sugar and melted it and then cooked it for 50, 10 minutes or so just to just to thicken it up, so that's just that's that's just the butter and sugar because that's like the caramel that's going to go. So Mark's going to make some pancakes. We need some really good lacy pancakes. Then he's going to fold them up. No pressure. Then he's going to put them in the pan with the sauce. I think he'd be good at folding. And then he is going to. So you need my face, as you're saying. Dina, this. you know what? I kind of need that. Um... So this is. Uh, 25 grams of butter, melted butter. You put that in just before you make the pancakes. It's good to let the pancake mix sit for half an hour, but you don't have to. Right, okay. Where's that? You've got, you've got the... Um... Do I need to put the pan on? Just one second, I'll tell you. All right. Have you got the brush, thing? The brush, I was just looking for it myself. Okay. Right, hang on a second. Can we... I'll tell you what we're using. You'd have to get your live. Pardon? You're live. I know, I know, darling, I'm trying. Jeez Louise, you God, you couldn't multitask like this. Hang on, I'm talking off camera all the time. Right, okay. Talking isn't multitasking. Okay, so with the, with um with your uh pan when you're doing pancakes, because of course it's pancake day on Tuesday, that's the other reason we're doing it. You want to season your pan. Don't Dina, don't we always say the first couple of pancakes 
nine <laughs> times out of ten are rubbish. <clears throat> and however hard we try, they always are. I'm just reducing that lovely orangey sauce again. So season. So a little bit of. Um, Do you know what we're butter. doing? A little bit of butter onto the. Oh, we've got loads to do, babe. Oh, right. just, okay. right, just, just getting. Know. I just want to explain about seasoning the plan in a bit. So this is called seasoning the plan. Pan. So you just put a bit of butter on, and you heat it up. The other thing is, often people with their pancake batter, they make the pan too hot. A little bit of a masterclass here for pa pancake day. So don't get your pan like raging hot either. You want it. You want to heat it on a medium heat, and you want some um, butter on the side that you can just keep just wiping out the pan. Is that like a I, yeah, yeah, that's exactly what it is. So I think I might have overcooked that. But um, that is such a cook phrase. Well, not a hot heat, but a medium heat. Mm -hmm. How the so fuck this is a high heat. Yeah. Like really hot, raging. Yeah. yeah. And this is a medium heat. Like literally in the middle. So you know what? Just to have a go onto your gas burner. Look, what's full whack? Halfway. What's yes, yeah, halfway. There's medium. little details like that that send the collie wobbles on the back. <laughs> um, now Nigella says the very best way to make a packet. Am I boring you, darling? No, not at all. I you just literally had to take in, and I had to intake my breath. Sorry, my arms hurting. Oh, I know it. I don't know how you do this actually. She says the very best way to make crepe Suzette is in a copper frying pan, but as one uses one so rarely. It is a huge expense. So just a small lip. I can't find my pancake pan. I've got one with a lip that big, which is really good because you just like oh, yeah. slide it off. They're on, they've got them on special in Sainsbury's at the moment. You, oh, need, okay. you need a thing with co copper pans. Right, because... Um, a special in Sainsbury's. Can you, when you're in there, can you get me one? Yeah. Or for copper pans? <clears throat> no, a proper pancake pan. Right. Okay, so I'm going to take the camera now. Oh, God. Why do I get so and nervous? <laughs> can you get him a plate to put his pancakes on? I get so <coughs> nervous. I can't remember. So, so, so these, aren't, these aren't American pancakes, are they? No. no. So the difference between a pancake and a crepe is that a pancake is thicker, right. fluffier. Right. A crepe is very thin. Right. So your pan's ready. No, we don't need the brand no, yet. No, no. Just... <laughs> He's getting excited. Okay. <laughs> Right. right, so pour into the middle, oh my God. and right. you're thinking about a tablespoon and a half sort of thing. So pour in the middle. A tablespoon and a pour half. Pour in the so middle. Try yeah, not yeah. to talk, just do what I tell you. Okay. Into the middle. Right, now put it down, pick up the pan, swirl it. <coughs> swirl it, keep swirling. No, I, think, I think I need a bit more. Mm. I should have got a bit more. It wasn't enough for you. Yeah, but this is going to be one that isn't going to work. Out. Out. Look at what, that. What do I need to... That. What do I do now? So Say something to me. It, and then we'll put that to one side. What do I have to do? Have it, no, 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 not yet. Not, not yet. yet, not the first one. <clears throat> not the first one. So what do I do? So just turn it over. That's it. Whoops. Okay. Oh, bollocks. Chuck it in the bin. Chuck it in no, the bin? No, no, no. Kiki will have that later. Do so you get another plate for, for, the de for the dead ones? So that's a bit dead. Yeah. It was. I wonder if that rubber spatula isn't helping you. Well, I'm worried about how much noise you'll make once you start showing off. <laughs> what do you mean? So, let's get it. Ooh. Yeah, okay, we're not going to let you know that. Who's oh, that? Okay. <laughs> All right. So, no. Watch what you're filming. Hang on, hang on. What have you already not done? Because Se you're rushing ahead. the pan. You're showing off. Yeah, Season so the pan. With butter, please. With the kitchen paper. Where's the kitchen paper gone? Oh, it gets so stretchy. It gets you so... Come on, get on Shut with it. No Jump wonder you're the teacher and exactly. she's not the teacher. I was just about to say that. It's like teaching your, ah! your loved one to... Uh, That's what are you supposed to do? Don't wipe it off. You need to put some... Why are you wiping it on and wiping it off? Put some on. That's what I just did. Right, okay. No, no, okay. That's it. Now, lower your pan. Your pan's gone high for some reason. Lower How it. come it's on a high heat? Because you, you put it... Oh. Right, okay. Right, now put good. it down. Okay, so now you know you need to put a bit more. So this I'm time, put a bit more. Now. Put a bit more. Okay, okay, okay. Bit more, bit more. No, that's bit. better. He knows. That's right. Well, not really. A bit more than maybe. You want it lacy. Nice and Look at you. <laughs> Look at you. Look at that. Now, okay, put it down. Right. So this Perfect is what you now. want in a crepe. Now, the, there's various reasons why we've got that lovely lacy thing. One, we let the pancake batter stand. Two, we have the pan on the right heat. 
three marks a little much. I was going to say, is there any? Mm. Okay, so what you're waiting for now. is for the pancake to go, to go a little bit dry brown. before you what, turn it What, whole thing over. go dry? Can you put the pan fully on the heat? It's not on the heat. So um, turn it up just a wee bit, a wee bit. Right, when do you think you could turn it? Uh, Looking at it now, what do you think? Do you think it... A little bit longer. It's going a bit brown around the edge, okay. isn't it? So take a look at that, but it's a bit soggy in the middle. How so do I do it in a way? Just another 30 seconds, oh. I think, 20 seconds. Oh, God, I thought you were saying do it. Okay. Because if it's too soggy in the middle, then when you try and... Split. Yeah, split it over. So we're just going to do two today for this cake, Suzette. Okay. Are you are you impressed that I knew the right amount? That was really good. It's still, I still think it's a little bit thin, Because you're edge. quite mathematical. Yeah, I think a little bit more would be better. How do I spin it? Right, go. Go. Let's go. Hey! <laughs> Winning! Oh you see, you don't God. have to do that rubbishy shit. No. What is it with men? What? Just... Was... When they cook. Well, the last one flopped. Score a gold, babe. Just <laughs> turned a pancake. Now, that is, I'm going to tell you, Mark, yeah. the perfect crepe. Lacy, bright. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. You make it sound like a pair well of knickers. Done. Okay. So now, so now. Oh, I mustn't lose, lose track way. of that. Oh, no. Now, now I'm dicing with death. Because I'm going to get you to do something. Right. Now make it into a triangle. Quickly, because it's going to burn. Hey. Fold it. How would you make that into a triangle? Uh, I don't... Oh, quick, right. quick, like, like that, like that. Yeah? Good. Then... Now pop it over on your plate, ready to go when we do the Susie. Aye, voila! Okay, don't muck around. Hey, bien! Mark, <laughs> what are you about to do again? Oh, my God. Because you show off. If you didn't show off, you'd be a really good cook. <laughs> That's too high, that pan, the butter's burning. Turn it down. This bit's stressful, Dina. The whole, oh, oh fucking, but, oh but, is it? She yeah. says it's stressful. But Dina, wouldn't you say I've done controlling well. the heat is a big thing with cooking, isn't yeah. it? That's, I, I would that's agree. That's the difference being able to cook. I mean, well. that's something I've learned over Can the you years. Just, you've done that once. Just get the pancake butter into the pan. Little bit more. Is no. Right? Oh, no. Mm. I know the right amount. I found it a bit crispy around the edge that last one. No, you were right. It's, it's a heart. It's lovely. That's it. It's magical, isn't it, Dina? Really, it's magical. So look at that, guys. Look at those lovely holes popping up. Now, another reason for that is the melted butter in it, isn't it, Dina? When you put melted butter into a pancake mix, even into an American pancake mix, it's just delicious. Why? But my vegan ones I did last week with the vegan butter got great. that lovely. Yeah. That was that, like they crumb, were really good. It was like good. a crumpet yeah. mixed with a pancake. It was yeah, like delicious. the unholy triad. Go back and catch up. Yeah, catch yeah. up with the last um, Oh, episode. God, it's going brown around the edges. Do I need to yeah, do something? Yeah, because you just thought you were in the pub. You were just standing Well, no, I just wanted chatting. to ask. You weren't right? watching your pancake. I was trying to pull your sister. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. Ha <laughs> ha! <laughs> Fuck, that's hot. How what do you girls... You don't need you to touch it. You don't need it. to touch it. What are you I thought you needed me try to turn it. Try this one. Try this one. I thought you needed me to turn it over. Yeah, but with not with your hand, you don't need the hand. Why are you oh. using your hand? Right hands are. Flip no. it over. Flip it over. Good. Yes. Boom. Oh my Sorry. God, Mark. Why is it mostly it's men who are chefs? Because they're assholes. <laughs> You go into a professional kitchen, Dina, where it's a female cook and everything is calm and nice. Yeah, until right, until they get into their 50s. Stop shouting, baby. Stop you really nuts. shouting. What? So it flip it. Mean? Do you want to? I bet you want to have a go at throwing it, don't you? Yeah. Okay, don't hang on, head. hang on. Don't hit hit the thing. Go on. Take it away from there. You're going to hit this. Where do I take it? Lean more this way. Mine, Dina's gone. <laughs> oh. Completely. Oh, I did it! Yay! I did it! Did you? Yeah, I did. But don't forget, you could have paid for England. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. It can do everything. That's the annoying thing about him. If you ever want to really know about him, he's so annoying. He can do everything. Ah! <laughs> he can paint. Look, he's yeah. painting over there. Has his painting? Yeah. But he can't stop showing off. He can do maths. Can do everything. Oh, excuse me. We are making pancakes yeah. here. How are they? Right, it's done. I like your sister's compliments. He's what do I do? Up. Oh, right. I now have to do this, don't I? So, over. Oh, no, hang on. Oh, what? Put that back. Try and do the other side because it's the pretty side. So, flip it back. Because the other side never cooks as much. Right, so now flip it over. 
Oh, I see. So you get the you yeah, get the... that lovely lacy look. Gotcha. Okay, so now you're gonna hang on. You're gonna put the other one back in the pan. So you'd usually do on top of each other, or just yeah, inside. you want. So we'd usually do a lot more than that, but we can't. It's not, a bit too hot. So, put some sauce in. Oh my God. How much? Just some. Just cover it. it doesn't really matter. Just do it. We, that's enough. For just do it. <laughs> Stop asking about. That's enough. Well, put it all in. We're not going to use it for anything else. Right, turn it, turn it down a bit. Right, Dean, you're going to help with the lower. alcohol. Can't go so, in. the Grand Marnier <laughs> is the right thing, but we've got the brandy. So, put some brandy in. Oh my god. Now don't How much? go mad. How much? Like Just a, a tablespoon. tablespoon. Right. Now you could just you could just flip that back. Flip it over the fire. What do you mean slip it back? back? Go back and forth until it catches fire. Go back and forth. Alright, just what? light use the lighter. Dina, knocking. Oh I see. Right into the flame yeah. of the cooker. Oh. There. Oi! Okay. Shovel, shuffle, shuffle, shake it. To, I want All right, to we'll put a bit more brandy and light it then. Yeah. But be careful, we've got the fire oh extinguisher. Don't do this at home, it's showing off. Oh, yeah. Come on, get a photo. Oh, cool. I'm trying to get you showing off at the same time, Mark. But what you normally do is allow the flame of the fire to lick over the top of the pan. Oh, dear. Oh, but you're all on fire now, so. Oh, you spit too much. Yeah, that's it. There that's it. Slither it onto the plate. Ooh. Now, Ooh. this, well, okay, oh. calm down. You could really, really, I Ooh. would just pour that onto the plate, Mark. Pour it onto the plate. All of it, but you don't want all that sauce. A little bit. And then put it at the front here so people can see it. Now, that would be lovely with some cream. Often people put orange segments, orange segments on with it. Oh, God. <laughs> it just makes you on there, doesn't it? What's happened? It looked great and then it didn't. Yeah, it got a bit too saucy. But it you looks get a bit, the idea. It's a bit alcoholic. Yeah, yeah, just a tad. That, but it will be delicious. None of us can try it. What's it called it. again? Crepe Suzette. So it's an alcoholic's crepe yeah. Suzette. Yeah. None of us can try it because that's so hot it will take. So just a few words of caution there. Obviously, we let Mark show off a bit. Don't. A, a, a easier way to do it is you can put it on a soup ladle, metal soup ladle, and light it and just gently put it on top. But be careful. Keep a lid nearby that you can put onto the, if it gets out of hand, the fire, you can put the lid onto the frying pan and it will sh shut out the oxygen, shut out the fire. So keep a lid beside your fire extinguisher or whatever, just in case. A little health and safety. We are done. Oh, dancey do it. Oh, no. Well, just go a bit faster. Oh, yeah. right. Okay. Celeriac. Right. Can you make me a French dressing, please, while I talk about this? Yeah. So, this is half a celeriac grated with this magical thing that I got in the ideal home Ooh. years ago. Um, it's, it's just, I suppose you could use a spiralizer. So, you've got half a celeriac and half an apple. Um, look how that does it, shreds it up like that. So now just going to be making a French dressing. Um, just tell us your quantities you use. Do you use one teaspoon of mustard, one so tablespoon use, of vinegar? You use whatever mustard you like. We like Dijon mostly with the French dressing. Um, so the basic is a teaspoon of mustard. Don't use Coleman's like a hot English mustard. It doesn't work in the dressing for this. So it's got to be French really. French mustard. So a teaspoon of mustard. Um, to two tablespoons of vinegar to uh, so if you're using two tablespoons of vinegar are you, you making use, it now? yeah yeah if you're using two tablespoons of vinegar you would use four tablespoons of oil sorry I, I thought yeah sorry so it's a oh, I can't get that off. so a teaspoon of mustard that's French mustard um at the moment, I'm using this sushi vinegar because I love the oh, sweetness of sweet, it. Yeah. But what I usually use in my salad dressing, if I've got it, is white balsamic. I don't like brown balsamic on a salad dressing because I think it makes it look awful. Ooh, can I just ask, is that vegan mayo yeah, good? Yeah, vegan mayo. Yeah, Ooh. the Hellman's one is pretty good. Is it? It is pretty good. Oh. So I'm going to use two tablespoons of uh, three tablespoons of olive oil. And then I usually use like um, 
a odorless oil like a sunflower oil, but I haven't got that, but that's what I would do. So, so it's not Definitely too heavy. For this because you don't want the, the dressing is just to soften it a bit. So this is celery salt. This. Okay, then sorry. salt. Then if you want, you can add a little chopped shallot or something like that into, this is just a salad dressing anyway. Garlic is really nice in a salad dressing, but if it's too um, strong, I think it, oh, it can be overbearing. So we have this little tip that we use, which is we put, we cut the garlic, oops, half a clove or a whole clove if it's not too big and then I put it on a fork and then I whisk it with the fork like that and then if I've made it before I just let I let it just sit in the olive oil like that I let it sit in the dressing and then you just get a nice flavor of garlic without it being ugh. But in, in this, you, you wouldn't put the garlic. You just want your olive, you want your oil, your vinegar, and your mustard. Okay, so I sprinkled some celery salt on there, which is going to soften that celeriac a little bit and give a little, mm. enhance the flavour of the celery. So then we're going to dress it. So you've got your celeriac and apple. Mm, delicious. Yeah. Delicious. So another thing you can do with celeriac, mash it with black pepper. Um, you can grate it like this, mix it with corn flour and fry it in, with onion into little rushdies. Oh, nice. It, I mean, it a really remoulade, is. remoulade, so you'd, you'd... This is the remoulade now. Ah. So I've got two tablespoons of uh, mayonnaise with a teaspoon of mustard. Remoulade. I'll tell you what would be quite nice to make one week is a bubble and squeak. You never hear about that. Oh, yeah, bubble and squeak. And then a little bit of my vegan cream. Ooh. Is that a new addition, cream? Well, it just it just makes it a bit looser. Mm. Don't eat all this while I'm out. Okay. Because <laughs> I love it. <laughs> you did really well with your pancakes, Mark. Very good. Lacy. Right. I can do anything, Lacy. So if you get a celeriac in your veggie box and you don't know what to do with it, this apple and celeriac slaw, remoulade, oh, really. Nice. That looks Whoa, good. Oh, look at that. Is it a cooking apple, did you say? Yeah, that was a brownie, a nice sharp one, yeah? Could you use a pink lady? Or a granny. Yeah, I suppose Make you could. The pink would look nice, wouldn't it, with it? Yeah. And, um, so, or mash it or make it into little fried rushdies. Oh, nice. It's a wonderfully versatile vegetable. Lovely with a nice slice of ham. <laughs> right, dance. Dance. Yeah. What's what the time? Oh, do? we're going to do, we're going to do Tom Levy. Tom Levy. Tom Levy. We're going to go one, two, three, pardon, boring. 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 One, two